This is Rick Carson. I was a Soul Train dancer from 1979 to 1991. My name is Manuel Reed. I was a Soul Train dancer from 1979 to 1992. <laughs> I'm originally from Los Angeles, California, born and raised. I was originally born in Seattle, Washington, a little island called Whidbey Island. My father was a military man, so we were stationed there. I stayed there about three years of my life, and um, they separated. My mother brought us down to LA, and I've been here ever since. Well, my uncle was the late Billy Preston, my mother's brother, and growing up watching him, I always wanted to mimic him. I couldn't sing, but I could dance. I was raised by my grandmother, and at age three, she put me into uh, dance, tap, and jazz. As I got older, I didn't like the uh, stigma that most gay people take dance classes, so I started with street dancing, hip hop, break dancing, and then just regular dance. I come from a very um, rhythmic family. Uh, my mother plays the piano, she played in the church. My mother taught my brother how to play the piano. We all kind of tinkered a little bit with the piano, but I pretty much picked up dance. We also sang, we had choir. I've come from the background of, you know, Sammy Davis Jr., watching him, watching the Nicholas Brothers, you know, tap dance and things like that. And I love the acrobatics and that just captivated me. So I always wanted to do that. I decided I wanted to be on Soul Train probably in junior high school. I knew that I could dance a little bit and that was the only thing on TV to showcase your talent. So I said, I gotta get there. I actually came on Soul Train in junior high. I was 13 and a family friend of ours danced on the show and asked me to come down with him. When I got on the show, I couldn't actually dance because I looked too young. I had to sit in the back and watch. The first thought was, wow, this is little. <laughs> and then it was like, wow, all these beautiful black people. And then it was like, I can't wait to dance. I can't wait to dance. But what helped me out was stage coordinator at that time was Durrell. And everybody thought that he and I looked alike and thought that he was my father. So he came over to me and said, anybody ask you, yeah, you my son, but don't tell him nothing else. So I had no problems getting in after that. I met Manuel right at, the, I think, the 10th grade, that summer from the 9th to 10th grade. That was during, I think, Pop Lock era. I was a member, well, choreographer of a Pop Lock group at the time, and I needed a new member. My friend told me about Rick Carson. We had a mutual friend named Billy. So Billy said, hey man, you gotta meet my friend named Rick. And he was saying, well, he's only 15 years old, but he can really move. I think he'll be a good fit for the, for the group. So um, we piled in the car and drove over to his grandmother's house. So they came over to my grandmother's house and uh, they said, okay, nice to meet you. He introduced himself to me and basically I said, okay, put on some music and go ahead and start dancing. So I'm like, y'all asking me to dance with y'all. Let me see what y'all got. You know, he had the same energy that we were pushing out too. Plus, he already knew how to flip, and I had already had gymnastic background because I competed in, in high school and a little bit of college, and I loved the fact of being airborne. So uh, we hit it off just like that, and uh, he joined the group, and I found out he had been going to Soul Train like a few months before me. I was going about four or five tapings before he came. And the tapings that he had gone to were the end of the season. So I said, okay, well, when the next season starts, I want to go. <music> Very first time I went up to the taping, of course, everybody's there. It's the new show for the new season. Chuck was the coordinator at the time, and he had an act of just looking right past you and picking the person right, <laughs> right to the left or right of you or right behind you. Rick and I, we came in dressed like each other, so I think Chuck at the time kind of thought we were brothers and let us both in. So that's the way I got in the very first time. Chuck had a nickname for us called the Blues Brothers. My dance style would be pop, lock, street, hip hop with gymnastics. Rick and I always dance with each other and we, we've often called ourselves 
cha-cha specialists. So we've always been able to cha-cha and throw in street dance into the cha-cha and still end up on step. Speaking of myself and, and Rick and, and my other friends that dance with us, we've brought many dances onto that show that were mimicked. We came on with a dance called Bedrock and it just caught fire all, all over the floor. The Bedrock was basically you would throw your whole body forward as you're doing that, you can actually turn any direction, but we generally, like we would go forward, side, side, back, forward, but it would be like a rolling motion, just like, like that. <laughs> Another dance was called the Housequake after Prince's song, and we used to do that, and people just gravitated to that. Everybody wanted to get on stage, and I used to wonder all the time, because it took me a while to get on stage. I started in 79. I got on the riser in 1984, I would say. And ironically, I had just told a friend of mine that that was going to be my last year on the show, because I figured, OK, I hadn't done a scramble board yet, but I said, OK, I can live with that. I had achieved pretty much everything I wanted to, I mean, uh, other than being on stage and dancing with an artist. But at this time, I kind of figured that oh, I'm not going to get on stage, but I can live with that. I've, I've done enough here, you know. And let's meet two of our Soul Train dancers. How are your name? Tracy Green. Hi, Tracy. I'm Ricky Carson. And Rick. I did the scramble board three times. The last time was with Rosie Perez. I was able to do the scramble board. Actually, I did it on Smokey Robinson Tribute. Jolie. Hey, Jolie. Emmanuel Reed. And Emmanuel. One of my most memorable Soul Train lines was uh, when Mayo and I came down the Soul Train line, we had on the, the brand new Soul Train jackets. My most memorable dance routine would probably be with Mayo, Reggie Thornton, and myself, and we did a routine that Reggie choreographed, but Mayo and I helped him do the back flip, so we incorporated that into the routine. My most memorable moment would probably be, I mean, there's so many, but I probably would say the time that we did a Soul Train line with Rosie. It was Rosie, myself, Rick, Leland, and my other friend, Dale. We had this step and we just did that full on step. And normally, if you're going down the Soul Train line, if you're not doing anything, you know, worth Don's interest, he generally will, you know, go to the girls line, you know, then come back and, and back and forth. But he held us throughout the whole step to the end. <laughs> My most memorable moment on this show, there are several, but the absolute most would probably be meeting my wife. I had told some of the guys here, you know, I'm ready to settle down, I need to find a good girl. So I told Leland, and when I came in the studio Sunday, he said, oh man, you missed it. There was a girl here that just what you're looking for. I said, well, if it was meant to be, she'll be here today. So I'm dancing on the riser and I look out in the audience and I see a girl staring at me. She probably gonna hate me for this story, but it's true. So I'm dancing, I look away and I look back and she's still staring. And I knew it was getting ready to break. So when the song went off, I jumped off the stage, walked over to her. She was sitting next to some gentleman. I said, excuse me, are y'all together? She says, no. I said, well, they can ready to take a break. Would you like to go get something to drink? We walked out the studio, across the street to the store, and the gentleman in the store goes, oh, you have a pretty girlfriend. I said, girlfriend, this is my wife. I didn't know her 10 minutes. And this November, we're celebrating 30 years married. You never really understand the magnitude of your presence on the show to the outside world. This is the first time Troop came on the show. Leland and I were on the side riser, and as soon as they hit the stage, they came right over to me and Leland and said, man, I really wanna, really wanted to meet you, man. I finally get to meet you. And, 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 so we hit it off like, like that, and I still know John John to this day. Although we didn't get paid dancing on Soul Train, there were several opportunities that allowed you to make revenue, one of which was traveling out of the country for Soul Train. I was fortunate enough to go five times to Tokyo, 
three times Europe, and twice to Singapore. And once you became a regular on Soul Train, you could get clothes and everybody wanted you to come to the event, never had to wait in line at clubs. It enabled me to do several different music videos in front of the camera as well as behind the scene and doing choreography. With MC Hammer, I was able to do uh, a lot of the stage choreography for a Southern East Asian tour. I paired up with Rosie Perez for The Boys. Manuel and I did a lot of stuff with The Whispers in the background, Midnight Star. Vanessa Williams was probably the highlight of that. We were on stage and Jeffrey Daniels came through. This particular time, he came up to me and said, hey, come off the stage, I'm gonna take you somewhere. Tell Rick and Leland too. We get snatched off the stage. We go do an audition for Vanessa Williams, get in the video, and then we're right back on stage. He's the only one to give me that love because next to him there is no other one. He's very sexy and oh, so sweet, and he knocks me off my feet. Say it! During the filming of the actual video, they had to paint a thicker mustache on me because I looked too young. <laughs> so, you know, I, back then, you know, I was upset. I stopped dancing on Soul Train for several different reasons. The most important one is because my career path took me in a different direction. At the latter part of my stint dancing on Soul Train, I partnered up with a friend of mine. We started a security company. The security company became very lucrative, and we had every AMC theater in California. All the award shows, from the Grammys to the Emmys, American Music Awards, and then, of course, Soul Train Awards. My wife, well, girlfriend at the time, got pregnant, and I couldn't be an effective father traveling all over the country dancing. I stopped dancing on Soul Train because I was doing some choreography with then Shalimar, and they were trying to get me to choreograph another spinoff group. So I was doing a little choreography for um, Stoney Jackson. He was gonna come out with a record. I think I was more so getting pulled in that direction. And that was the direction I really wanted to go because by this time, I've done the scramble board, I've worked with an artist behind the scenes, I've choreographed artists, done the commercial, and I've done the Soul Train line. So pretty much all my goals were set. So I was pretty pleased with where I was. And, you know, at that time, dance was changing. I mean, even though hip hop was alive and well, and I still hip hop danced, it was not a problem. It was just time to move on and let the new school kind of come in and do their thing, you know? There's just a time you, you just have to know when to get out, <laughs> you know? So I'd rather get out too soon than too late. Soul Train was such an impactful show because at the time there was nothing to showcase our talent. If I had to do this all over again, I would do it again in a nanosecond and wouldn't change nothing. I would do nothing to uh, change anything. I would definitely do it again because being on a program that little did I know was going to be historical, that's just something that I'll, I'll always cherish.